You might remember, a few months back, we spoke on here about the Hubble tension, sometimes called the crisis in cosmology. It's actually just one of several tensions that are present in modern cosmology, by which I mean there are different teams using different methods that don't agree on basic parameters governing the universe. In each of these tensions, the real question is whether one of our measurements is somehow wrong or whether our model of the universe is somehow wrong, the latter being far more profound, of course. Well, now we have another surprise, thanks to an experiment called DESI, another cosmology result that threatens to upend the standard model that we've relied on for decades. That model is Lambda CDM. The CDM part stands for cold dark matter. That's not under attack, at least not here. Rather, it is the Lambda part. So what is Lambda? It is the cosmological constant, what Einstein once famously called his greatest mistake. It's a constant energy density intrinsic to space itself, an energy field that causes the universe to expand ever faster. In other words, accelerate. The cosmological constant is an example of what cosmologists call dark energy, something I'm sure you've heard of. But it is not the only possible form of dark energy. Maybe this thing changes from place to place or over time. And indeed, that's exactly what this new result from DESI suggests. DESI being the dark energy spectroscopic instrument mounted on a four meter telescope located at Kitt Peak National Observatory and supported by many of you, US taxpayers via the Department of Energy. So just to rewind for a moment, there are now several established strategies for measuring the fundamental cosmological parameters of our universe. But of those, there are three that I think everyone should really know about. The first is the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB, the roughly three Kelvin radiation left over from what we call the surface of last scattering. That's the moment when the universe first became transparent to light, an event that occurred when the universe was just 380,000 years old. The tiny differences and patterns encoded within that light provide exquisite constraints on the shape of the universe, the rate of expansion, and the matter content, dubbed capital omega subscript m. The second main player in cosmology are standard candles. Special stars like supernovae, cepheids, evolved red giants, and carbon stars that have a knowable and standardized intrinsic brightness. The beauty here is simply by measuring their apparent brightness, we can tell how far away they are from us, and then a measure of their speed via Doppler redshifts allows us to map out the cosmic expansion rate. So that's the first two methods, and really that is what the Hubble tension is all about. The current expansion of the universe, dubbed H0, comes out at many sigmas of significance difference between them, at least according to some teams. For more on this, watch our previous episode or my podcast with Nobel laureate Adam Rees. With that context out of the way, let's now turn to the third key method that cosmologists use, and is actually the method that the DESI experiment used, that is baryon acoustic oscillations, or BAO. When the universe was less than 380,000 years old, it was a hot, dense plasma of ionized particles and photons, making it opaque to light. Within this fluid, small density fluctuations triggered pressure waves, essentially sound waves that propagated outward, driven by the competition between gravity and photon pressure. These waves grew as the universe expanded, and when the universe cooled enough for electrons and photons to combine into neutral atoms, a process called recombination, the pressure support vanished and the sound waves stalled, freezing their imprint into the matter distribution. These waves left a slight excess of matter at a characteristic scale, about 500 million light years today, which influenced where galaxies later formed. So, in a statistical sense, galaxies are a bit more likely to be separated by this scale, and that is what BAO traces. As we observe galaxies at different redshifts, this scale acts as a standard ruler, allowing us to trace how the universe has expanded over time. BAO is a well-established technique, and DESI is the most ambitious survey of its kind to date, with its later datas release analyzing over 14 million galaxies and quasars. Before I get to the results, perhaps the most difficult part of making these videos is the B-roll, which we often source from science foundations and movies, but often neither are quite right, and that's where today's sponsor, Storyblocks, saves the day. 
So here's how it works. Choose a monthly or annual subscription and you get unlimited downloads from a huge library of 4K and HD video, templates, music, sound effects, and much more. This is authentic stock content created by real artists that AI simply can't replicate. What's even better is that anything you download on Storyblocks has perpetual licenses ensuring that you are legally protected. I can honestly say that ever since my editor and I started using Storyblocks, the editing process has been so much easier because searching for that perfect B-roll clip often takes up way too much of your precious time. So a huge thumbs up from Cool Worlds here. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head to our exclusive link storyblocks.com slash cool worlds or click the link down below in the description. Once again, that's storyblocks.com slash cool worlds. Now back to the video. Okay, let's get to the results. Taking the DESI data in isolation, it's primarily sensitive to two numbers, the matter density of the universe, omega m, and the product of the dimensionless h0 parameter and the sound horizon scale. So an obvious question is how do these compare to that determined independently using the cosmic microwave background using the Planck satellite? Well, they're certainly similar, but DESI report that there is a 2.3 sigma discrepancy. And if all we were to do is to look at DESI data by itself, then I think that would be the end of the story because two sigma, let's face it, isn't very significant. It's far below the five sigma threshold that scientists usually use to claim new physics. But the DESI team are well aware of the limitations of BAO in isolation. And so they fold in some other constraints to see how well everything fits together. Spoiler alert, not well. Adding constraints from Big Bang nuclear synthesis, that's the relative abundance of elements that were forged in the early universe, the team can calculate the classic H0 parameter to be 68.5 plus or minus 0.6, which is just 1.4 sigma away from that found by Planck using the CMB, 67.4 plus or minus 0.5. So this looks like pretty good news to completely independent techniques delivering sub percent level H0 values that are fairly consistent with one another. But now here come the problems. As DESI add more and more external constraints to their analysis, it becomes harder and harder to unify them under the standard cosmological model with a single set of parameters. So the DESI team throw out the standard cosmological model, replacing a cosmological constant with evolving dark energy. In particular, they use a pretty simple model known as the chevalier pulaski linder formalism, where the pressure divided by the density of the universe, W, is not a constant, but changes with redshift, following this equation, where W0 and WA are treated as free parameters by DESI. If the standard model is correct and dark energy doesn't change over time, then W0 should equal minus one and WA would be zero. Now again, if we use the DESI data by itself, there's not much to say here. The evidence for evolving dark energy is pretty weak. It's just 1.7 sigma. But adding in the CMB data increases this to 3.1 sigma. Adding in constraints from standard candles changes the significance to 2.8. 3.8 or 4.2 sigma, depending on which data set you use. So if you have seen a 4 or 4.2 sigma kicking around in the news or on YouTube somewhere, that is where it comes from. And frankly, it's a little bit cherry picked because there are three possibilities there. But I just really want to emphasize one more time how this result does not emerge using DESI data in isolation. It only manifests when you compare it to these other data sets. We've already seen how there is a small disagreement in H0, but the matter density omega m also looks a little bit off between DESI and CMB analyses. So it seems as if the combination of these small tensions compounds to give the three to four sigma evidence for evolving dark energy. Now, yes, we can dissolve this incompatibility by adding more flexibility to our cosmological model, evolving dark energy, but that doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. Perhaps the answer is as simple as the fact that one or more of these data sets has some unknown systematic error in there. The DESI team are confident that there is no sufficiently large systematic error in their data, but then so too are the Planck team and the others. 
I reached out to David Spurgel, renowned cosmologist, friend of the channel, and a leader of a recent and super precise CMB experiment called ACT to comment on the DESI result. He remarked, I believe that if you combine ACT and Planck, it shifts parameters to lower omega m and higher h0. This improves agreement between CMB and DESI. So maybe, and hopefully, the two teams will get together to combine their data, but it's unclear if that will happen. The truth is that many cosmologists are buzzed about DESI's recent work, but there are plenty of others who are skeptical about its conclusions, because at the end of the day, evolving dark energy would be the most shocking discovery in cosmology since, well, the discovery of dark energy. The reported solution by DESI implies that dark energy is weakening over time, or in other words, was stronger in the past. In fact, at one point in the past, it would have exceeded the W equals minus one boundary, entering a regime that we call phantom dark energy. That's important because it violates a critical conjecture in general relativity known as the null energy condition, which many theories assume to prevent issues like time travel and wormholes. It essentially states that if you shine a flashlight in any direction, the ray should not experience negative energy along its journey. But what if it's right? How would it affect our expectations for the ultimate fate of our universe? In the standard cosmological model, our expectation is that the universe will end with a grim heat death scenario. That's where it expands faster and faster, powered unendingly by the cosmological constant, until eventually the universe is so diluted that entropy wins. But if dark energy weakens over time, then the acceleration of the universe will asymptote towards zero. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that the universe will stop expanding. It could continue to expand, just tending towards some critical H0 parameter. In this big freeze scenario, there might be more hope for large-scale structures to persist into the far future. But a big caveat here is that the DESI team only tried one possible model for how this dark energy evolves over time. Even if their result is correct, it may very well be that a more elaborate and complex evolutionary form gives a much better fit to the data. What this means is that all bets are off. The universe could end in heat death, big freeze, big rip, or even big crunch. It would all depend on what the correct model is. But as exciting as this prospect is, because nobody likes the heat death scenario, I don't think we're quite there yet. There is still quite a bit of skepticism in the cosmology community, and this significance level, whilst tantalizing, is not quite a threshold before we would bet our house on it. Even a small systematic error between these different teams could dissolve the whole thing, and look, we've seen that before. Remember the claim of faster than light neutrinos that ended up just being a systematic? So look, this is definitely very exciting. We should all pay close attention and it highlights just how important these experiments really are. So I really hope that Desi and others keep pushing on this data because the answer could transform our very notion of what kind of universe that we live in. So until next time, stay thoughtful and stay curious. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you meant to end of the video, then you probably enjoyed it. So please do consider hitting that subscribe button. I promise you won't regret it. And if you want to become a super supporter to my research team, the Cool Worlds Lab, then you can use the link up above and down below. All right, you're free to go.